Hey guys, welcome to chapter seven. In this chapter, we'll discuss rational functions. Uh, these are functions that look like one over x as the parent function, and then we modify them to get uh, some very rich mathematics out of it. All of this starts with inverse variation. So that's why that's our first section, 7.1. Uh, learning objectives for this section will be, by the end of the section, you should be able to classify direct versus inverse versus joint variation. And then while this objective literally says write inverse variation equations, we'll practice how to do that with direct and joint variation as well. Let's get started. So I guess the first order of business would be to determine the difference between direct and inverse variation. We say that we have two variables, x and y, and there's nothing specific about x and y. These variables could be p and q, l and r, uh, a and b, for instance. Uh, there's nothing inherently special about the two variables x and y. We say that two variables show direct variation when the relationship between them is as follows. y equals a times x, or y equals ax, as long as a is not zero. Now, a is the constant of variation, so it has to be a real number, but it's not allowed to be zero because if we multiply a variable by zero, zero times x is just going to be zero. So x is no longer a variable. It, it, it's immaterial as to what the value of x is if we multiply it by zero. So that's why we say that the constant of variation must be some number, positive, negative, fraction, decimal, that's immaterial, but it has to be a non-zero number because if we multiply it by zero, the whole thing just vanishes. Now a, uh, this is a, a common misconception that students walk in with, that a has to be a positive number or that it has to be a number greater than one. That's not the case at all. A could be positive, negative, uh, it could be a fraction, it could be a decimal. So an example of direct variation is y equals 4x, because 4 is a constant, but also y equals negative 4x. That is also a direct variation. So it does not have to be a positive number. It could be negative. Uh, in fact, it could be a fraction as well. So y equals 1 fourth x is a direct variation as well. More on this when we get into more examples. But we say that if this relationship is true, we say that y is said to vary directly with x. The general equation y equals ax for direct variation can also be rewritten as y over x equals a. So consider what happens if we divide x on both sides. So this x will go over, yielding y over x. ax divided by x, the x's will cancel out, leaving just a behind. So uh, this is very, very useful because if we take the ratio of y to x, and we get the same number, that's sort of telling us uh, that the relationship between x and y is that of a direct variation. So any order pairs that we have that follow this format, where if we divide the y-coordinate by the x-coordinate, and we get some number, and if we divide another y-coordinate by another x-coordinate, if we get the same number, we see that that's going to be a direct variation. More on this again when we see the examples. Next, uh, an introduction to inverse variation. We say that two variables, again, the, the name of the variable is immaterial. It could be anything we want them to be. We say that they vary inversely or that they show inverse variation if the relationship is y equals some constant a divided by x. Again, a is not allowed to be zero because zero divided by a variable would just end up being zero. So yet again, a is called a constant of variation. And then we know that if this relationship is satisfied, that y is varying inversely with respect to x. Additionally, just like we did in the previous problem, what happens if we multiply the x over to the other side to get the constant by itself? If we multiply the x over, we're going to get an expression that says xy equals a. So if we have a set of ordered pairs, that's where we can use this idea if we multiply the x-coordinate by the y-coordinate and we get some number, well, whatever that number happens to be, could be a positive number, could be a negative number, could be a fraction, could be a decimal, as long as we don't get zero, we say that x and y vary inversely or that x and y show inverse variation. Let's look at some brief examples. Let's say we're asked to determine whether x and y in these three examples show direct variation 
inverse variation, or perhaps neither. So first example is xy equals 5. Ideally, what you want to do is try to rewrite it so that the y is by itself on one side and the x is on the other side, because that will clarify the location of the y, the location of the x, and the location of a. So if we divide both sides by x, we end up with y equals 5 over x. This reminds us of y equals a, a constant, divided by x. So this yields inverse variation. Or we know that the, the relationship between x and y here is that, that they vary inversely to each other. Here, y is already solved for. y is equal to x minus 4. And this does not fit y equals a over x or y equals ax. It doesn't fit either of those forms. So we say that this is neither direct nor inverse variation. Lastly, we have an example of y over 2 equals x. Here again, the same spirit, if we try to get y by itself, we can multiply the 2 over to the other side. And that yields us y equals 2x. This looks exactly like y equals a times x, some constant times x. And that was the equation that direct variation follows.